Welcome to the Improv Tunes. Today I'm going to teach you a short form game called Five Things. It's a great performance piece for your short form team. It's also a great exercise for your long form team. Let's meet the rainbow players. Let's get into a little game I like to call the Five Things. Here are the rainbow players. Uh, one, five Things is one of my favorite short form games. I use it even with long form teams because it teaches so much about observing, communicating without words, uh, and um, semiotics about signs because once you've created a gesture you all know what that means and there's some people I know I could do the same like I hold my hands out and I kind of shake them together like I have two fists and I shake them back and forth and that means jello amongst my old orphans teammates because we did five things over and over again so here's how you play five things let's say we're sending green out of the room green is gonna be the guesser okay so orange is gonna come up orange is gonna MC the game and orange is gonna get it's called five things you're gonna get five things from the audience when you're just learning the game I play three things right because you're gonna get five things in five minutes and when you're just learning the games get three things in five minutes maybe you're just learning the game three things in seven minutes you'll see what I'm talking about in a second so you get five action words from the audience verbs kicking painting flying um winging um let's see jumping all that kind of action words okay so you say kicking a ball cool so then you say, okay, now we need to make this complicated for the guesser. So instead of a ball, what are they kicking? What's something you ordinarily don't kick? A watermelon. Cool, a watermelon. So this person is going to be kicking a watermelon. Okay. You do that with all the sentences so that they don't make sense. They're absurd. They're grammatically correct, but they're just two things that don't go together. Like instead of painting a painting, you're painting um, a dog. Like you're literally painting a dog, right? Okay. So you do this all five of the, of the sentences. Then you start making them crazy so here's some things you can do to make them crazy um on what holiday valentine's day okay so you're kicking a watermelon on valentine's day um with what famous celebrity lionel richie okay so this person the first sentence is kicking a watermelon on valentine's day with lionel richie and you do that with all the sentences so the all sentences are wacky and crazy okay so then you have the sentences you call the guesser back in and then as a team you try to only using gibberish, no, not using words, using your bodies, working together as a team, using gibberish. You try to get them to guess the sentences, right? You only have five minutes to do five sentences. So that's one minute a sentence. So you have to burn through stuff really quickly. That becomes the challenge. That becomes the, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. Um, you end up learning languages. You end up learning stuff really quickly. So here's the rules the way I learned them. I totally understand when I explain improv tunes, when I explain formats and all that kind of stuff, there's multitudes of ways of, of doing this. People have learned this multiple different ways. There's multiple ways to call these games and everything. Totally understand it. I welcome all that stuff, all those notes on the comment section. But please bear with me. This is the way that I learned it. So for the adjective, for the verb, um, the you have to get the guesser to do it. The person who's giving all the clue, the clue giver does not do the action. So if you're doing kicking, you don't mime a soccer ball down and kick it. You put a soccer ball down for the guesser. You tie their shoes on and you present them and you maybe like try to pretend painted a goalie. And it, it, it dissolves confusion because if you're like, let's say you're being like a barber and you're pretending to like chop someone's hair, they might think, oh, you're the barber. I'm getting my hair cut instead of giving someone a haircut. So you always agree. We're not doing the activity. You're making them do the activity. Okay. Um, so that's something you agree on. And then you start learning like these little tips. Okay. If it's going to be on what holiday, it, when you're teaching your team this game, don't give them gestures. Don't brainstorm. Let them go for it. Let them try to figure it out. Because by trying to figure it out, A, they might come up with something better that you've never seen before. And B, that's the language your team is learning. That's, that's the learning process. Like we didn't get that. Let's talk about that. Okay. So, but there's some things you can do. Like instead of wearing a shirt, what, what are you wearing? A burlap sack or a potato or a pair of shoes. So what you do is you get with your two fingers. This is the way my team used to do it. You get two fingers. This is how you communicate to the, to the teammate. And you would pinch just their shirts like at the shoulders. Like, you know, those are safe spots. You would just slightly tug it. And then you would gesture as if you'd thrown their shirt away. Okay. Which to them says, okay, instead of a shirt, I'm wearing this. Or you like just tug like maybe a little bit of their pants and you pretend you mind like you're throwing their pants away. Remember using gibberish. Gibberish is your friend as well. Not only is gibberish is your friend, is if all you're doing is, is gestures and pantomiming, it gets boring. Gibberish adds this layer of intensity to the game. Okay. Then another one is uh, you can say on what day of the week. 
So you can then like do a square on the wall and go, and it kind of sounds like it. And you say, you know, Thursday, or maybe you hold up seven fingers, whatever your team does, because now that relates to them. Oh, it's going to be in a day of the week. That's, I have to figure out what day of the week this is or what time of the day it is or uh, what day of the year or what season. Like, So you start developing this sort of like shorthand, which is great for short form teams to have a shorthand in these scenes. It's also great for a long form team just to be able to observe and read each other. Um, so I love this game because it, it teaches it teaches that sort of communication on teams. Here is another tip for the game. So when you get the sentence, each element is its own special clue. So kicking a watermelon with Lionel Richie on St. Valentine's Day. There's four clues. That sentence is actually just four elements. It's kicking, it's watermelon, it's Lionel Richie, and it's, it's Valentine's Day. Those are the four clues. Now, what you do as a team, when the MC is saying, give me this, give me that, blah, 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 the team is splitting up as the MC is talking. So as Orange is talking, the team is in the background with another piece of paper going, okay, uh, pink, you have kicking. Okay, um... Uh, red, you have uh, watermelon, Wh whatever it is, there, because there's no downtime for the audience. You don't want to like get the sentences and then turn around and go, okay, let's confer. That's not exciting. That's entertaining. Watching people talk about it is not entertaining. You want, and what you can do is as long as you get that first sentence split up, you can kind of split up the rest of the sentences while the show starts, right? As long as those first two people are going, then you can kind of split up the rest of the sentences. What we do is you write sentences, give a lot of space, write the next sentence, give a lot of space, and then just using initials. You put, you circle the word, and then you circle. We put the initials in the circle. You circle the word, put the initials in the circle. So, it would. Like I say pink was uh, was a uh, kicking. So you just write P because P had the last name. Let's say it's pink, pink, P P. You 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 circle kicking. You put P P, and then you go to the next one. Okay, watermelon's red, red. So you put R R watermelon, and so you just keep on going. And you do that right, so that people can kind of just look back. Oh, and and then each player only has to remember what their word is. They only have to remember like, well, this 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 is really what I'm getting set for the next one. Because if you have everybody on stage trying to give the same clue at the same time, poor Green is going to be overwhelmed and not know where to look. Give and take focus. That's what helps out with this. Another thing it teaches you is accenting. Don't take over your teammates game. There's there's times I'm, I'm telling the truth. Guys do this a lot where someone's on stage and they're struggling or they're just taking a second or they're a little slower and, they, and the person will just jump on stage and take over. Don't do that. You're not allowing your teammate to have a voice in the improv show. Okay. So let them go. They'll kind of look to you if they're struggling or you can be up to the side, like raising your hand, like, do you need help? And when you raise your hand, don't raise your hand to get the attention from the audience. Don't raise your hand to be the center of stage. Raise your hand to help your teammate out. So give them a chance. And when you split up those sentences, make sure everyone has an equal chance. And let me tell you, the hard ones are typically the funniest ones. Okay. Good luck. Have fun. I'm sure you can find another description. Um, and, and, and failures become part of your lexicon. Like I said, we used to do this during rehearsal, and then we'd have a new lexicon. Okay, we know this means this from now on, right? Have fun. Five things. It's challenging. It's tough. When you're first learning it, do three things in seven minutes, but eventually get to five things in five minutes. The time limit forces you to be creative, and I want you to be creative. Bye, everybody. That was the five things. Thank you for watching the Improv Tunes. Like I always say, you don't have to support the Improv Boost, but you should support each other, including there's a ton of great improv podcasts being produced right now. There's a lot of people starting Patreon pages with a lot of great improv content. Follow people in the community, support people so that it encourages people to continue to great make content and then more people are inspired to create even more content. And then there'll be more resources about improv all over the world. See you on the next Improv Tunes. Bye for everybody.